met your pastor last week. I was over in Gordon, Pennsylvania, and I saw him on the back row going, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought, you know, that guy kind of likes what I'm t- teaching here, so, you know, I don't know where he's at, but uh, Wisconsin's, <laughs> Wisconsin's a long way, so I, I figured I would text and, and offer before I go back to Wisconsin to... Uh, to come if, if he felt like it would be a blessing at all, and uh, he felt like it would be, even though he's told me since then that he's usually so organized that he has his whole life planned out six months in advance, and that, the, that God's been speaking to him lately about loosening up and trusting him and kind of going with the flow a little bit. So I am here just to sanctify your pastor. <laughs> Get him on the program with God, okay? So y'all just bless him. Isn't it, isn't it good that he's that he's willing to be before you and just say, hey, I am still growing. I'm pressing on. I'm not, I'm not pretending to be somebody that I'm not. Uh, I am somebody who needs Jesus. I'm somebody who loves Jesus. I'm somebody who knows Jesus, but I'm growing into Him, into His image. And, uh, you know, he's, he's taking people with Him. The things that He receives from the Lord and from the Word, He's, he's passing that on to you. And uh, I've just, in the time that I've been with Him, I've sensed Him to be a, a genuine, sincere man of God. Uh, and that's, that's good to have. It's not easy to find these days. Uh, you can find people that, you know what? My daddy was a pastor. My grandpa was a pastor. I went to seminary, and by golly, you better give me a job. <laughs> and it's a career. And they know how to work the machinery. And they know how to get people to do what they say and have a Bible verse to beat you up with if you don't. And that's ugly. It's really ugly. Those are the kinds of people that kill Jesus. Those are the kind of people that hurt me with the Bible in Jesus' name. And, uh, and that's not nice. Uh, I've seen a lot of people out on the streets that aren't going to church anymore and vowed never to do it again because of what happened when they were in the church. And there's been many times that I've looked them straight in the eye and I could see, I said, you've been hurt by somebody who hurt you claiming to be a Christian, claiming to be somebody who uh, knew the Lord. And you took that into your heart and you took offense and it drove a wedge. The Satan used what they did to drive a wedge between you and God and you and His people. And it's not good. I sense that there's a few people in here like that tonight. And, I, and, and that's part of the reason that you came to this church and began to begin to feel settled. Because you found a place where, you know what, they're, they're, we're just sincerely following the Lord Jesus. And it's good. And if some of you are here who still have that pain going on in your heart, I want to tell you, you don't need to carry that. Jesus carried that. It was the religious people that put Jesus to death. They thought they had the Word of God right, but when the Word of God showed up in the flesh, they would not follow Him. They they wanted their doctrines. They wanted their traditions. They did not want that man in living color. They did not want Him. They thought they did, but what they really wanted is they wanted to be right more than they wanted God. And when God showed up and showed them that they were wrong, they weren't willing to humble themselves and become like a child so that they could enter the kingdom of heaven. How many of you have ever had to say, Oh God, I thought I was right, but I was wrong. Let me tell you my story. <laughs> Let me tell you my story. I was, uh, I went to seminary, and I believe the Bible always did. Uh, after I became a Christian, I did. <laughs> I became a believer when I was 19 years old. And uh, was wholehearted. And I'd read the Bible, and I'd see the amazing things that Jesus did, the amazing things that the apostles, the apostles did, the amazing things that the believers were doing uh, in the early church. And I thought, man, that's the way I want to live. I want to live a godly life. I want to live a holy life. I want to live a life of power that sets people free where God is healing the sick and He's raising the dead and He's casting out demons. But the only people that I heard that were talking about healing the sick and casting out demons and raising the dead were on the television asking me for my money. Mm. But the people who who had had their lives in order, who had uh, wives and families that, that, that had their respect and that had the character of the Lord Jesus, they didn't have miracles. In fact, they were teaching me that miracles ceased after the first century. And the reason that they ceased is because the whole purpose of miracles was to establish the authority of the Bible. 
And the, but my problem was, is I believed the Bible. And I could read. And I kept reading and looking for the place where in the Bible it says that miracles and the healings were going to stop after the end of the first century. And that I was looking for the place in the Bible that it said that the purpose of miracles was to authenticate the truth of the Bible. But the Word of God says that that was not the case. I couldn't find a place that it said that. In fact, in John chapter 14, verse 12, Jesus says, Whoever believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And even greater works than these will he do because I go to the Father. You know, we all, every Christian, doesn't matter whether you believe in miracles or not, believes in John 3.16, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but will have eternal life, right? Yep. That's a whosoever thing. So it don't matter. If you're, a, if you're a you-soever here, you're a whosoever. So that means you can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be saved. Amen. You will not perish. Amen. Why? Because He's Lord. He died on the cross for you. He rose again for you. His death is to take away your sins. His resurrection is to give you victory and justify your life, to give you a brand new life, the same life that raised Jesus from the dead. When you call on His name, you become born again. He puts His Spirit inside your spirit. God makes you alive together with Christ. Amen. He doesn't make you alive with He doesn't make you alive with with electricity, like Frankenstein. He makes you alive with Christ. He puts Christ inside of you and you come alive on the inside. That's what He does. That's a whosoever thing. But you know what? There's a whosoever a few chapters back in the same book where Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you that whoever believes in Me will uh, do the same works that I do and even greater because the Father goes, because I go to the Father. So you know what? You could just do something. For God, you could put them two verses together. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him will not perish but will have eternal life and will do the same works that He does and even greater because He has gone to the Father. Amen. Amen. Now, one of the problems is, is that those that believe in healing and that those minister that minister healing in the church... <coughs> They get recognize, recognition, they get credit, and they start getting an ego, and then they start getting money, and then they start getting planes and trains and automobiles, and they start getting air conditioning and dog houses and, uh, and television shows, and then they become really popular and everybody sees and knows them and stuff like that, and they don't teach anybody. They say, oh, it's my special anointing. You need to write in for $14.95 and I'll give you some of, my, uh, some of my anointing in the mail. May their money perish with them. That's demonic. It's deception. It's a lie. Everything that you need, you need. Everything that you need, Jesus purchased for you by His blood. You don't have to buy it from any man. Not a single one. It's important that you understand that. Any person that's telling you you have to give money to get any spiritual blessing, any, is lying to you. He's lying to you. He may not know it. He may not be malicious. But he's false. He's wrong. He's lying to you. He's deceived and deceiving you if you believe him. So now... You don't have to believe that junk anymore. Isn't that good? Amen. You don't have to be embittered towards people like that. You don't have to get a chip on your shoulder. Sometimes people are deceived and they're doing the best they can with what, they, what they've what they been taught, but we need to go back to the Word, okay? So I'm just, I want to want you all to know that Jesus Christ, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says, by His blood, that you have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms in Christ. Amen. Now that's really good. Yeah. Every spiritual blessing. Let me ask you, how did Jesus heal people? It was, it was an amazing gift of the Holy Spirit, was it not? Mm -hmm. 
It was the power of His Spirit. Was that not a blessing? That blessing's yours. Every spiritual blessing belongs to you in Christ. Everything that He had into in Him, He purchased the right to give it to you and to me. And I thank God for that. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, I think I had an assigned text and I had at least when Forrest and I were texting back and forth, he said, Pastor would love it if you could come and preach on Mark 16. So uh, I, bet, I guess I better open my Bible and get on with my job. Huh? Otherwise, the pastor's going to fire me and send me home. What you doing wasting all our time, man? People got to work tomorrow. Get to Mark 16. I got to work tomorrow. Y'all are blessed. You know, I, let me tell you a little bit about my story. I actually was a missionary in Turkey for two years. Uh, did not believe in healing, did not know who I was in Christ, but I knew that Jesus had salvation. I knew just enough to get saved and get my butt kicked by Satan the rest of my life. <laughs> not that I was living in sin. I, I, knew how to, I, I knew I needed to live holy, but I'll tell you what, I didn't know, didn't know anything to get people set free from sickness, set free from disease. My wife got sick in Turkey, and we prayed, Oh God, if it's your will, please heal her. Over and over and over. If it's your will, please heal her. Let me ask you, if, if, I, if I preach the gospel to you and say, look, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you might be saved if it's God's will. Forsake everything. Forsake your sin. Turn away from it. Be ready to lay your life down because He laid His life down for you. And you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And if it's God's will, you might be, you will be saved. If I said, God, please, if it's your will, please save me. Wouldn't you think, man, that guy needs to go back and learn the gospel? I tell you, you don't see prayers like that when it comes to healing in the New Testament. You see them in the church a lot, but you never see it like that in the New Testament. There's a reason. Because it's wrong. Because it's wrong. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Jesus is just raised from the grave and He's speaking to His disciples. He's commissioning them, His apostles. And He says to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. He who has believed and has been baptized shall be what? Amen. Praise the Lord. Have you, be have you believed in here? Amen. Have you been baptized? Amen. You you need to be baptized. You know why? Jesus said, He who believes and has been baptized will be saved. Now, the Word of God says in Ephesians, it's not any work that saves us. Your being baptized does not save you. Your believing doesn't save you. It's what Jesus did that saves you, and you need to believe on what He did to save you. Okay? And we get real theological about it. Because it's not by our works that we're saved. It's by what He did, did for us and does in us that saves us. But my Lord and my Savior says that if you believe, you need to be baptized. Why? Because I say so. Because <laughs> Jesus said so is what I mean. Do you understand that? You do it because He's Lord. And believing means that you believe that you're following Him now. You're not believing, oh, this is the way I think, this is the way I'm going to do it, and that and He said, she said. No, Jesus is Lord. You turn from all that way and you say, look, you're the boss. I want to be baptized. Why? I have no idea. It's weird. You know, you get into water. Somebody dunks you underwater and, and says, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, be baptized and old's gone, the new has come, the how we are, I'll do it here. Y'all might do it a little bit different, but I tell you, there's one baptism. You're baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Why? With every eye open, every head turning, because this is a whole self in. It's like hokey pokey. You put your whole self in or you keep your whole self out. There's none of this. You believe privately in your heart kind of thing. Okay? And I'm not trying to I'm not trying to condemn anybody or put any pressure on any anybody. But some of those things that you feel like, where people feel like, oh, I might not be ready to be baptized. You know what? All of that stuff is the very thing that being baptized because you believe in Jesus actually saves you from that power. Yeah. 
Because all that stuff that's trying to hold you back still got its hooks on you until you put your whole self in. Okay? Jesus wants you not just to be saved in your heart. He wants you to live in the power of His salvation on the earth. He wants to demonstrate that He is Lord and He saves through your life. And it starts by believing on Him and saying, I'm yours, all in. Mm -hmm. He who's disbelieved will be condemned. My Bible then flipped. Here we go. Sorry. He who is disbelieved will be condemned. And these signs might accompany those who have believed. No, I'm sorry. These signs will accompany the, the gifted ones. These signs will accompany the, uh, the seminary trained pastors. These signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick. And they will recover. That's the word of the Lord. That's Jesus speaking to His apostles. So, have you ever been in a living room or somewhere, you know, and one of your one of your uh, associates in the living room get a phone call, and you here's what they're saying, uh huh. He did what? Oh my goodness! Well, where's the car? You know, he, you can kind of tell something's going on, right? <laughs> Is he in the hospital? Oh my goodness! Please tell me he's still alive. You know something. And you go, who, 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 what? You know, but you know something bad doesn't happen, right? Because you can just tell what the conversation is on the other end, a significant portion of it, just by listening to, to, to the end that you can hear, right? All right. So he who has believed and has been baptized will be saved, and these signs will accompany those who have believed. Believe what? Believe what the apostles went into all the world to preach, right? Go go preach. What are they preaching? Hey guys, you've been beaten, getting, been getting beat up by the devil ever since the fall of man. And there was one who walked among us who had the name above every other name. When he walked into a room, the devils ran out. Right? Mm-hmm. Or if they couldn't get out, they started screaming, Ah, we know who you are. You're the Holy One. And he said, Shut up. Go. Amen. And they listened. And they obeyed. Here's the deal. When you believe in Him, He gives you His name. He gives you His name. You aren't living on the basis of your name anymore. When you're baptized, the old you is gone. And you are raised up into Christ. He now lives in you. And you live in Him. Now you girls, some of you like to go shopping. How do you like it when Daddy gives you his credit card? I mean, that's pretty nice when you get to go shopping in your Daddy's name. Is that right? I mean, you don't care what's how much is in that bank account. You're like, it ain't the bill ain't coming to me. Whap, whap, you know, sale, whap, you know, swipe that thing over and over again. And you know what? The richer your daddy is, I'm telling you, the the more vigorous you get about this thing because you're confident. Because you know, my I ain't stole this thing. My daddy gave it to me. He allows me to go shopping in his name. Why? Because He's rich and I'm with Him. He gave it to me. I preach to you the glorious, unfathomable riches of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's all. And He gives you His name. Salvation is rich. And that doesn't mean just being saved out of hell and into heaven. That means being saved from the old you, from the power of sin, from the guilt of sin. When you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, He actually comes to live inside you. The, the Paul said that my gospel is this, Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's right, because the Lord Jesus comes to live inside you. Now let me ask you this. You're pretty used to Jesus being awesome, aren't you? 
how used to Jesus being awesome in you are you? Because there's one thing that's changed about Jesus. It's not His lifestyle. It's not His power. It's not His authority. The only thing that has changed about Him is His location. Now He lives in you. When I came back from Turkey, I was licking my wounds, but God was still using me. He's using me at the. He uses every one of us at the level of understanding and faith that we have. So I want to let you know that every one of you here is precious to Him. You really are. You really are. He's not condemning you. And so if this is new to you at all, I just want to say, don't let it disturb you. Look, see if it's in the Word, test it. And if it's there, go ahead and just say, you know what? There's more to Jesus thing than I thought. And that's good. It's for me. It can help people. Uh, Jesus comes to live inside of you. So I tell people I tell people this. Do you understand that the Christian life is not just a different belief system? It's not just a different lifestyle. It is that. It, but it's something more. Because Muslims have a different belief system and lifestyle. Buddhists have a different belief system and lifestyle. The Christian life is much more than that. The Christian life is a different life form. It's a different life form. Second Peter chapter two, verse uh, verses one, chapter one, verse four says that by His precious and magnificent promises, God has made you a partaker of the divine nature. Do you understand that Jesus said, "Listen, I can't do these works." It is my Father living in me, doing His works through me. And you know what? Some people think the reason that Jesus did miracles was because He was trying to prove that He was God. I want to let you know that's not what Jesus taught. Jesus taught that, uh, that He couldn't do the miracles. It was God doing the works through Him. If Jesus' miracles prove that He's God, how about when He sent the twelve out healing healing the sick and casting out demons and preaching the kingdom. Did that prove that they're God too? Apparently not. What about when He sent the 72 out? Healing the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead and preaching the kingdom. Did that prove that we got 72 messiahs running around? No. Or maybe Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords and actually brought the kingdom of God into this world again. And maybe... That kingdom was what you and I were to possess from the beginning. Maybe that's what we were created for. So that we, God created us in the beginning. Remember in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, He says, Let us make man in our image and in our likeness, and let them rule over the earth and all that's in it. God created us to contain his image. We were created as containers. How do we bear His image? The plan was is that He would live inside of us, supplying us His life from the inside so that anybody who wanted to see what the invisible God looked like would look at any human being who's living with God inside them and they would say, God looks like love. God looks like sacrificial love. He's holy. He's powerful. He's so full of peace and truth. He's amazing. How do you know that? Look at them. They'll know that you're my disciples. What? If you love one another. Jesus said, if you see me, you don't see me. John 14. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So, our best picture of who God is, of what He's like, is the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Amen. Any, any, anyone want to disagree with that? The Word of God says that Jesus Christ is God made flesh. Alright, now, Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2 says something really interesting. It says that God spoke in times past in many portions, in many ways, to our fathers. But in these last days, He's spoken to us 
in the Son. God's got a message for us. Do you know what it is? Look at Jesus. This is me. Here I am. Okay? That's His message. Now, what we've got up to that time is you've got bits and pieces and portions and parcels and the full plan of God hasn't been, been manifest. So it's kind of like you've got puzzle pieces. But Jesus is the cover. He's the cover. You want to know what God is and what God does and what He's like? Look at Jesus. You know what God is? He is Jehovah Rapha. He is our healer. He uses His power to heal us. Jesus spent three days on, on a hillside healing the sick, teaching them the kingdom. This is who, what the kingdom is. And demonstrating this is what it does. It heals you. It casts out demons. And this kingdom is the kingdom that you want to live in. And this is the kingdom that is invading the earth. And when you believe on me, you get born again. Now you can see the kingdom. Right? John chapter 3, verse uh, 3. He said to Nicodemus, unless you're born again, you can't see the kingdom of God. But when you're born again, what can you do? You can see. The lights come on. <laughs> they just come on. And you know what else you can do? In verse 5, you can enter into the kingdom. I live in the kingdom. The kingdom lives in me. Romans chapter 14, I believe it's verse 12, says, The kingdom of God is not food and drink. It's righteousness. It's joy. And it's peace in the Holy Ghost. Do you understand? When you receive the Lord Jesus Christ and are born again, the kingdom of God has come into you. The Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is, lives inside of you. And it says that He will give life even to your mortal bodies. That's good news for those of us that have mortal bodies. Anybody got a mortal body around here? Good. Hey, how many of you looking forward to an immortal body? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for purchasing for us an immortal body. But i I got a question to ask. How much healing is your immortal body going to need? None. Zero. How many sicknesses and diseases are, are there that are going to get onto your immortal body? None. None. So you want to know something? All them healing scriptures, guess what they're talking about? Your mortal body. He heals us of all our diseases. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 4 says that He carried away our sorrows and He carried away our griefs. If you look in the, the Hebrew or, your, or the margin of your Bible, you'll see that the, the alternate translation for that is, and they didn't want to put it in there because all the people translate and don't believe in healing. <laughs> and they said, it really says, He bore away our sicknesses and He carried away our pains. Praise the Lord. And you know how, you know, and just in case you're wondering, well, maybe it could, maybe they did translate it right. You don't know Hebrew. You're right. I don't know Hebrew. But I do know how to read. And I look over at Matthew chapter 8 where it quotes that verse again. And it says, they brought to him many who were sick and many who were demon possessed. And he healed them all, fulfilling. He carried our, sor he carried our sicknesses and he, and he carried away our diseases. Praise the Lord. That's what that verse means. And then you look over into 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. And it says, By whose stripes we were healed. It doesn't even say, like it says in Isaiah 53, By His stripes we are healed. It says, By His stripes we were healed. It looks back on the work of Christ. Receiving the stripes across His back. What was God doing? That was the Father in the Son. Now I need to... Hmm, I could open this up just a little bit. Because this is beautiful. I need to. Do you know in Colossians, it says that all creation is in Christ. He created all things in the Son. So you need to understand, if you went way, 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 way back before God said, let there be light, before He created the heavens and the earth, that there was no void for God to step to the edge and speak into. 
God was all. He was all in all. And the Father and the Son put creation in the Son. The Son opened up Himself. So that all the full, and it says that God was pleased that all the fullness dwell in the Son. The Father only had the relationship with the creation through the Son. Because the Father doesn't want anything outside the Son. And the Father didn't use His imagination to make the heavens and the earth. He looked into His image and said, I'm going to put a little lamb in there. looks just like you, son. I'm going to put water in there. It looks just like you, son. You're like living water to me. And food, because you are the manna. You are the food of heaven. You, you're what satisfies me. Do you understand all this stuff that Jesus pulls out? And He does that. Well, God created image bearers to participate in His fellowship. Created, He formed a little lump of clay, got down on His knees and breathed life. You imagine the first man, the first thing that man saw was the face of God in His face. God down on His knees, so to speak. Humbling Himself to touch dirt so that He could walk with us. We could bear His image. It's amazing to me. Thank you, Jesus. That's amazing. I love that. Alright. So, when Adam fell, do you understand that every single one of us was inside of that man? Right? He was our great 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 grandfather. You know? So when great 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 grandfather, if he gets killed, we all die too. Right? He but there was a way in which he died. He was cut off from God. He died to God. He would the ruler, God's image bearer and ruler was taken hostage because Satan rebelled in heaven. God took care of the rebellion in heaven, but who's the ruler on the earth? Man first, right? Let man rule. Right? So that's why Satan's in the garden in the form of a creeping thing because God had given man dominion over every creeping thing on the earth. He gets thrown down to the earth. He immediately takes the form that demonstrates his place on the hierarchy of biology. <coughs> Amen. You know what happened? Man was taken captive by a lower life form. Because Matthew 24 says that hell was created for Satan and his angels. The devil and his angels. It was not created for man. <coughs> He's trying to escape the wrath to come. And now he's got a hostage. You want to hear something cool? God does a hostage exchange program. <laughs> he negotiates for a little while. And finally he says, I give, this is what I'll do. I'll become a man. And you can have me. And Satan goes, Duh, uh, Okay! <laughs> he's real smart. <laughs> and then... But you gotta let him go. That's what he does. He says, boom. And he says, I killed him, I killed him, I killed him. And then three days later, he rose from the dead and he says, and you're out of bullets. Bam! <laughs> That's exactly what he did. For you and for me. Thank you, Jesus. Is that good? Amen. That's good. Amen. But I want to let you know something. There's something even better. Who is older, Adam or Christ, the Son of God? Who's older? The, that's right, the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Even when He's laying in a manger, one hour old, how old is that baby? He's the Ancient of Days. That baby is ancient. He is before all things. So as soon as is that baby stepped into the human race, who becomes the oldest human being? Jesus. Jesus. He is now the head of the entire human race, and we are all inside of Him. So when He goes to the whipping post, He becomes one 
with your pains, your sicknesses, your diseases, and He suffers for them in His body to carry them off of you, to carry them out of you. The same way that when He went to the cross, He was taking your sin and mine and bearing it away in His body so that when He died, 2 Corinthians Chapter 5 says, when He died, all died. He is the last Adam, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Adam's race, as far as God's concern, was over when Jesus died on the cross. He's not trying to improve Adam's race. He's not trying to... How many times we try to solve problems and we look at one another as problems you need to know that every problem was solved when Jesus Christ died he took you and he took me and he's no longer doing a self-improvement program he took us out back and went Poof! because we need that right how many of you are frustrated trying to improve the old Jew and change the old Jew and when the good news to know the old is gone the old is gone, so that in Christ the new has come. Put on the new. Wear the new. You don't take a, when you go shopping, right? And you bring home a nice pretty new dress. Do you get your old dresses that have holes out? And get the scissors and cut the new dress up and say, you know what? Let's cut this up and, and patch up the old dress. No, you don't do that. Why? It ruins the new dress and it pulls away from the old. doesn't match. That's what Jesus said. You know what? I'm brand new. I am a new humanity. I'm putting the old to death. Why? So that when I rise up, that when whoever lives, right? When you call on the name of the Lord, God's not trying to get you to improve. He's trying to get you to come alive. He wants to give you life. Call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be saved. He will give you life. He will, he's not holding your trespasses against you. Be reconciled to God. Turn to Him. He's not angry with you. He poured out His anger on Christ. Judgment was put on Christ. Right? And so there's a judgment day to come for all those that aren't in Christ. But right now, today is the day of salvation. Amen. Call on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Amen. That's just the way it is. So now, when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're in Christ. Christ is in you. So stop trying to improve the old life form and just contain the new one. Live out from the new one. Let Him live in you. I discovered that. And then I discovered I walked in that for about seven years without healing a soul, without even thinking that that was for me. Because my mind was all filled with these little boxes that Jesus was supposed to fit in inside of me. I read the Jesus in the Bible, but the Jesus in the Bible, I didn't realize, you know what? He didn't stop being awesome just because He moved inside of you and me. He really didn't. He said that when you believe what the apostles preach, He gives you His name. And in His name, you cast out demons. In His name, you speak in new tongues. In His name, you take up serpents. Somebody came in tonight and said, oh, I don't know about this service. You know, I don't know. I've never been here before like that. And, and, uh, and I'm not sure what's going to happen. I said, well, you ain't afraid of snakes, are you? <laughs> he did. He did. He's like, oh man, I'm in the wrong place. I'm going to run. <laughs> Listen. That old snake, the devil. Have you ever walked in a garden and seen a real snake? What happens when it sees you? It starts running off, right? That, all that means is we are not on the defensive. We're after them. We're taking up serpents. Jesus said in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, He says, I have to give you authority over all the power of the enemy to trample on serpents and scorpions. Let's do some trampling tonight, guys. Amen. Let's do some trampling tonight. Acts chapter 10, verse 38 says, you know Jesus of Nazareth, how He went about doing good. He was filled with the Holy Spirit and power and went about healing all who were oppressed by the devil. devil because God was with Him. That's the Word of God. 
Jesus never recognized sickness, disease as a work of his Father. Do you know that? He never did. He always recognized it as a work of the enemy. Jesus didn't go around screwing up the will of God, saying, you know what? Oh, I'm sorry, you're learning really good things from being sick. Uh, you just build character and keep on going and a little pat on the butt and just go on home. Oh, by the way, here's some fish and bread, you know, because you've been following me for three days. People did not follow Jesus three days to get a spiritual Hallmark card and a pat on the butt when they are racked in pain. They followed Him because they saw God in Him. What they thought they had to wait for until they got to heaven in the sweet by and by, Jesus said, good news, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's here. It's come to rescue you. God did not create you for this separation. He loves you. And I'm glad. I'm really glad. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you are doing. Thank you, Jesus. Let me tell some testimonies, okay, just for a little bit, because... Yeah. You know, I like teaching the Word because your faith is not built on my testimonies. <laughs> it's really not. But I'm telling you, God's doing awesome things. And I'm still growing. I don't consider myself uh, self as having laid hold of it yet. Not, I'm going to tell you, I'll be straight up, not everybody that I lay hands on gets healed. Not everybody I lay hands on gets instantaneously healed. But I tell you, I'm believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believers will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You know, my faith is not based on my experience. My faith is based on the Lord Jesus Christ and His Word. So sometimes I just say, I have not laid hold of it yet. But this one thing I do, I forget what lies behind and I reach forward to what lies ahead. And I will take hold of what I was taken hold of for. You know what you were taken hold of for? To contain Christ, to manifest Christ to the world. Amen. And He's no less awesome today than He was 2,000 years ago. Amen. We need to have our mind renewed to the Word of God. You know who the Word is? It is Jesus. Amen. So if your theology does not look like the cover on that box, your theology is wrong. I had to go to, to the people that I was... Uh, that I was leading spiritually and exercising spiritual oversight and I had to humble myself to them and say, I've been wrong. I've been giving you encouragement and a pat on the butt and you've been racked in pain and I have not laid hands on you. I have not believed God for your healing because quite frankly, 15 years ago, we came home from the mission field and I was still, I just was bewildered. My problem was not that I didn't believe that God could heal. My problem was back then, I believed God could heal, but He wasn't. I thought. I thought when I was laying hands, I had to get God to give me something out of heaven that I didn't already have. But that's not what the apostles taught. That's not what Jesus preached. Do you know what? The apostles said, silver and gold have I none, but what I have... I give to you. God put the kingdom inside of you. He put Holy Ghost inside of you. And He whoops up on, on sickness and disease. You've got the healer, the healing, the life that heals our mortal bodies, the life that raised Christ Jesus from the dead is inside of you. If somebody... I'm still preaching. Golly, you ought to you all be patient with me. We're going to get to the ministry time, but this is, this is ministry. This is ministry, because my job is not just to minister to you. My job is to equip you to do ministers, Amen. right? Amen. So, uh, so I just I just want to encourage you. Let me share a couple of testimonies, because I'm going to I'm going to talk about a couple of different ways that Jesus heals and why it's important. Uh, went to a college campus one day, sat down on a bench, and there was a young man there uh, who came and sat down next to me. Now, every time, and, and this is what I, I tried to start up a conversation. You ever try to start up a conversation with somebody who doesn't want to talk to you? <laughs> In the Midwest, that happens a lot. <laughs> People are kind of like this. And in the winter, it gets worse. Four polar vortexes, everybody's just feeling like this, all brought in, don't, don't talk to nobody, and just walk, you know, wait to thaw out. <sighs> you know, but this young man came and sat down. And I tried to talk to him. He didn't want to talk. And then finally I just looked at him and I said, Hey, you know what? I'm not even a student here. But you must need a miracle. 
he looked at me like I was crazy. Came from outer space, sat down next to him. And I said, no, I know you must need a miracle. You know why? Because I pray God set me next to people that need miracles. And you came out of all the places on this campus. You sat right next to me. You must need a miracle. What is it? Well, he wanted to argue for a little bit about whether miracles were possible and whether God was real and all that kind of stuff. And I just said, listen, man, I'm not going to argue about it. If God could do a miracle in your life, what would it be? And, he, and then he got serious and he said, honestly, I've been mad at God since I've been 12 years old. I really think God's real, but I'm just, I told him, you know where I'm at. I, he gave up. And, uh, and I said, what happened? What did God do to you? Not that I believe God did something wrong, but I wanted him to know I'm not judging him. I want to listen. And he said, I've been in pain since I've been 12 years old. And I said, really? Oh, man. I know what God did to you. He set you next to me. Where does it hurt? He said, well, it hurts all over. I said, it hurts all over now? He said, no, it comes and goes. And I said, where does, does it hurt now? He says, yeah, it hurts now. In, in my legs. Always hurts in my legs. That never goes. And I said, do you mind if I just put my hands on you? Can I pray for you? Jesus said, believers will lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. You know what he did? He goes, whatever. Man, he was in such faith. Man, there was an atmosphere of faith just rolling in that room, man. And, and I'm telling you. You know what I did? I got down off the bench and I got down on my knees in front of him and I put my hands on his legs and I said, and, and, and before I started saying anything, he goes, ow, dude, stop, that hurts. I wasn't squeezing him. I wasn't doing like cow eat corn like my dad used to do when I was five years old. It wasn't nothing like that. I just barely put my hands on his legs. And, and I knew what was happening. I said, right now in Jesus' name, pain, you go. Everything causing him pain, come out of it. And he, he kind of went like that. And I said, move around. And he moved his legs. And, and I said, stand up. He stood up and he was walking around. And I, he was confused. I mean, he was looking for his pain and couldn't find it. And, and I said, it's gone, isn't it? And then he reached in his trench coat pocket and he pulled out some painkillers. And he said, could have been these. And I said, you take one of those while I pray for you? <laughs> he said, no. And I said, listen, man, let's walk for a little bit. The truth is, You've been angry at God since you've been 12 years old. You said you didn't want to have anything to do with God until He helped you. Now He's helped you, and it's taken you a while to let it go. I understand that. But let me tell you what's happening. See, Jesus said that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come that they might have life. See, the enemy came into your life and began to destroy your health, began to steal your peace of mind, began to steal your money, began to steal your energy. He was robbing you. He was trying to kill you, man. But you know what he's also? He's the accuser. And he started accusing you, didn't he? He started telling you, you know what? God must not really, you must have done something really wrong. What did I do to deserve this? And, you know, is there some sin I didn't confess? And you started confessing everything you could. You started trying to change everything a 12-year-old boy could change. Finally, when you did that for a while and the pain didn't go away, then he started hammering on God. He started accusing God, didn't he? He started saying, well, God must not be real. and he, If he was real, he doesn't care. He's not even any good. And then finally, underneath the pain in your body and the torment going on and the confusion going on in your mind, you finally just gave up, didn't you? And he said, he was just crying. He's like, that's exactly what happened. But God just showed you what he does. It was a lie the whole time. And it said, listen, what God did for your body, He wants to do for your soul forever. He suffered on the whipping post so that He could heal you. And He suffered on the cross so that you can be forgiven of all your sins. You can come to Jesus right now. He's alive. He rose three days later. That's why He's got power to heal. That's why He's got power to save. He can change your heart and change your life and make you brand new. And I said, listen, I'm not trying to put any pressure on you. I, I got plenty to do, believe me. But I want to make myself available to you. I'll give you my, my card. And if you ever want to talk, man, I'll meet you for coffee. I'll co go anywhere. I, I know because I could tell with the interaction. Interactions with strangers can be a little bit, you know, you got to kind of go at the pace of where people can handle it. 
I could tell he was getting, you know, he just had his meal for the day. You understand? He needed to go digest that for a little bit. But I didn't, I felt like, okay, I should make myself available to him. How many of you know Jesus only had a one out of ten return rate? You know, when he when he healed the ten lepers, man, one came back. Uh, I ain't doing near as good as Jesus. I just got to tell you, people like Jesus. He had hair still on. Huh? They think I'm a little bit. I look like them people wind up on the news, you know. <laughs> anyway, but this guy, he called me later. It was that was early in the morning. He called me right after dinner, right before dinner. So it had been all day. And, and he said, is this Andy? I said, yes, it's Andy. He said, I'm this guy that you met down here. And he goes, dude, you fixed it. <laughs> and I said, I said, fixed what? And he said, I'm, I'm healed. I'm completely better. I've not taken any pain meds all day long. I've been waiting for the, the, the pain to come back. And, and I've, or I've been waiting for withdrawals from pain medication. He said, none of it. No, I've never gone this long without pain meds. And I've, and, and I've never gone this long without pain. It's gone. And I said, praise the Lord, man. And he said, no, but you don't understand. I had lupus. And I said, I don't care what his name was. He's gone. <laughs> He's Jesus is Lord. And he loves you. And you know what the last thing he said to me? He said, I feel like I just got my life back. Yeah. And I said, you know what? That's real appropriate because Jesus said it was the thief's dealing, killing, and destroying, but He came that you might have life in abundance. Amen. Amen. That doesn't mean Cadillacs. No. That doesn't mean mansions and dog houses with air conditioning. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Especially not no cat houses. With <laughs> 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 They asked if I was allergic to cats. I said no. They didn't ask me if I liked them. <laughs> All God's creatures are good. I'm telling you, cats taste just like chicken. <laughs> They're not gonna let me stand there. <laughs> they told me that. <laughs> I'm gonna be sleeping right on the floor right here. <laughs> Isn't God good? I'm telling you, some of y'all in here have been battling with stuff, and I want to let you know, it's illegal. It's illegal. You can stop searching for why did why did God let this happen to me? You need to know Jesus never went around making people sick. So don't say that the Father does it. Because Jesus said, if you see me, you see the Father. Stop accusing God of child abuse. Even when Job suffered. You know what God did? He's the one who healed him and restored him and made him new at the end. It was Satan was the one who was causing all the torment and torture and pain in his life. It wasn't God. Now, and it's a good thing to know, Job wasn't even in the New Covenant. That's true. He said, you know what? There's coming a day when my Redeemer's going to set His foot on the earth. He's going to lay a hand on God and lay a hand on me. And this stuff ain't going to happen no more. Amen. Job's Redeemer has set His foot on the earth. And, this, and now He has all authority in heaven and on earth. So sometimes it's awesome, just like that. And I love it. Jesus is always awesome because we're always releasing the finished work. I'll tell you about another story. A guy named Isaac. He was a homeless guy when I first met him. About two, three years after I first met him, my family and I, we were walking around at the fair. as a small fair out in the mall parking lot because that's the kind of fairs that, that I can afford for my children. <laughs> we get one of them $15 wristbands and just follow them around for a few hours. So it was good. And uh, Isaac... I didn't know who he was at first uh, because he was an African American man. He's light skinned, uh, but all I saw was an oxygen tank. And I'm telling you, when this gets in you, you start seeing how many hurting people there are, and you stop ignoring them because you thought it doesn't have nothing, nothing to do with you. It, it doesn't have a whole lot to do with you. It's got a whole lot to do with who lives inside of you. It really does. Believers will lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. I saw him carrying his oxygen tank around. I walked over to him and I said, 
Isaac, because he was mustard yellow. And uh, I said, what's wrong with you, man? And uh, he goes, I'm on hospice, man. Got, got COPD all in my lungs. I said, they gave me two months to live. I said, well, that ain't right. Hold still. In Jesus' name, put my hands on his chest. In Jesus' name, COPD, you go. Get out of him now. Leave him. In Jesus' name, lungs be made whole, be made new. Now take a deep breath. He goes, Don't worry. Right now, in Jesus' name, COPD, let him go. Lungs be made whole in the name of Jesus. So take a deep breath now. He goes, man, thanks for trying. I said, trying nothing. I'm believing. I'm believing Jesus for a completed work. Jesus said, believers will lay hands on the sick and you'll recover. And he said, thanks, man. You know, he was kind of done with me at that point. Yeah. You know, he gave me two swings. All right. Like, Come on, man! I get three, right? Hey. <laughs> you know? yeah. But you know, you let you let. Sometimes you gotta. It's not how many times you do it; it's what he did two thousand years ago. Yeah. All right. So, year goes by. My wife and I are coming out of Walmart, and uh, I see a four prong cane and a man sitting on a bench <coughs> outside of Walmart. I see a four-pronged cane, and it's like, squirrel! You know, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like after this thing. And, uh, and so I, I walked over, and I looked, and I said, Isaac, man, where's your oxygen tank? And he goes, don't need one. Jesus healed me. He's sitting there smoking a cigarette. I still haven't learned how to heal stupidity, so if you're here to get stupidity passed out, y'all gonna have to take it down the road. I'm sorry. I, I do say, come out, you deaf, dumb spirit. I ain't seen anybody get more intelligent yet. Anyway, so he's sitting there smoking a cigarette. And I didn't bite on the judgment. You understand that Satan all the time trying to get you to bite on why people should be sick. You know what? Because that's what he's been training you for uh, your whole life. But Jesus showed us everything's different when you're in the kingdom. That's what he brought. That's why he told the, told the disciples. He said they're like sheep without a shepherd. Well, I'm sending you. Go. Preach the kingdom. Heal the sick. Cast out demons. Raise the dead. And then, after He raised from the dead, He said, you go teach them to obey everything I commanded you. That includes preach the kingdom. Heal the sick. Cast out demons. Raise the dead. I'm not raising any dead people yet. I'm really looking for volunteers. <laughs> I'm telling you. Anybody dies while I'm in town, you call me. I'm coming over. I'm not kidding. I don't want nobody to die, but I'm serious. You call me. Jesus. Because uh, He's in me and He's in you to help people. All right? It's not, that's, I know it's funny, but it's not really a joke. I don't want anybody to die. Anyway, so I said, I, Isaac, what's wrong with your, what's got you using this cane? If God could heal you of your COPD, you reckon he could probably heal you whatever's got you using this cane? And he goes, yeah, like he never thought of that before. And I said, what is it? He says, I got something with my hip and my back. I don't know what it is. I said, well, who cares? Right now, in Jesus' name, back and hip, you be healed. All pain, come out of it. And I said, now stand up, see how that feels. And he stood up, and he said, hey, I didn't have that pain I always get. I said, that's good. But I noticed as he was walking, he's kind of still kind of wobbling side to side. And I said, let me check something. Because sometimes people get back and hip pain because they're all out of alignment. I said, sit, sit down, put your hips nice and square back in that chair. Relax your feet. I'm going to pick your feet up and I want to check and see something. I picked his feet up and he had one leg that was a half inch shorter than the other. And I know 
you can go see YouTube videos. There's people who do all kind of crazy stuff, pull and shoot things off. And if that's the kind of person you are, that's just that's just a loser. But I, I want him to be I want him to be healed, and he's out of alignment. I just pick his feet up and I said, right, look at that. You see which one's short? He said, yeah. I said, I want you to hold still and I want you to watch this. I'm not going to move your feet at all. I'm not going to do anything. Right now, in Jesus' name, short leg, I command you to come out right now. Command the power and whoop, just like that. Came right out. And I said, did you do that? And he, he said, no. I said, who did that? He said, it was Jesus. And I said, well, why don't you stand up and walk around now? And he stood up and walked around. You know what? He had a nice even stride. He didn't have any pain in his hip. He had his he had his four prong cane in his hand just out of out of uh, habit. But now the landing gear was up. <laughs> and I pointed it out to him. I said, you know what? I don't think you need that that cane anymore. And Isaac, he's about six foot five, about 270 pounds, African American man. So he puts that cane on. He goes, hey, I don't need this cane no more. He starts yelling a little bit. He's getting loud, and he says. Jesus healed me. I, I'm better. I don't need this cane. So now you got a big six foot five, 275, 70 pound African American man with a metal bar yelling in front of Walmart. And, and there's people coming out and people going in and they see Isaac yelling and they just stop. And they're kind of, and there's a crowd gathered. Man, it was just like Acts chapter three. You got people going up to the temple to go worship. Right? And they see him leaping, running, praising God. And you know what I did? I said, God just healed him while he was smoking a cigarette. Don't believe the hype. God loves you as you are. He has the power to forgive you and the power to change you. Is there anybody here who needs prayer for anything? Because I'm telling you, Jesus is real. He's Lord. He's able to save you. He's able to heal you. And I had an opportunity to pray for some people. had an opportunity to share the gospel. Gave some people my card and they never called me. Just because, you know, that's the way things go. But Holy Spirit is big and He's able to follow up on people. How many, how many of you know that? Amen. Amen. So what, is, what am I telling you them stories for? I'm not telling you them stories so that you will think that I'm something. I'm telling you those stories so that you will understand Jesus Christ is Lord. And those who believe in the message of the apostles, the ones that they spoke, believers in that message, will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I had Jesus living in me all them years. And I didn't know that He would do it through me. But He'll do that through you. And that's a good thing. Because y'all can help people. So tomorrow night I'm going to talk a little bit more about how you can have a ministry of laying hands on the sick and give you some more pointers. And I'm going to stick with Mark chapter 16 because that's what the pastor told me I was supposed to stay on. Okay? Or at least Boris told me the pastor said we want to have a conference after this thing. So I, hope, I hope this is this is good, okay? So now what I want to do is is I want to minister to people. Because half of y'all came here tonight because you just wanted to be healed. Don't give me a big long sermon. Come on, just shut up and, and pray for me. <laughs> right? <laughs> but you understand why I had to do this. Okay? Tomorrow night won't be near as long. In Jesus' name, Lord, help me. <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right. All right. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank You for each one here. I thank You, Jesus, for the price that You paid for their souls, for their salvation, to give them the Holy Spirit, to give us eternal life, to give uh, healing to our bodies. Thank You, God, that our bodies are temples of Your Holy Spirit, that You did not create them to be Satan's stomping ground. You created us to be Yours, to be filled with You, to express You in every way. Thank You that we're Your house and that You've purchased us and that You've paid for the upkeep, O oh God. We bless Your name. We praise You. We worship You. We thank You, O oh God. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over every sickness and every disease, every pain in these people. In Jesus' name, and I command you, go from them. I release healing right now. Bodies, you be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Be healed in Jesus' name. Jesus sets them free. You're free in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. No sickness or pain can abide. 
Father, I thank You for each person here. I thank You, God, right now. We just I'm going to shut up for a second. I'm just going to say, yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Everything. Everything that You purchased. Hallelujah. All authority is Jesus's in heaven and on earth. You bow the knee and leave them. Bodies in Jesus' name, every organ, everything, head to toe, perfect wholeness, you be completely healed. You come into line with the Word of God. Jesus loves them. If there's anyone here tonight who is wondering, Lord, where am I with you and all this stuff? I want to invite you. Let's just pray together, every single one of us. Some of us need a fresh start. And some of us need just to start. Put your hands on your heart. You can open your eyes if you want to. It doesn't matter to me. I don't care. Just put your hands on your heart. And let's just pray together. Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for me. For paying for my sins. Wash me clean. Forgive me and make me new. You have risen from the dead. You're Lord of all. And I follow you. You are my Lord. You are my King. Thank you for the forgiveness of my sins. And the gift of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I receive you to rule and reign in me with all your power. Fill me. Use me. Manifest the kingdom through me. Because Jesus is Lord. Feeling good, yeah. all right. And you can take my joy, cause the world didn't give it to me. You can take my joy, cause the world didn't give it to me.